Welcome back to the shop. Today I am going to do a video on vices. And you can spell that however you want. V-I-C-E or V-I-S-E, whichever applies to you, and maybe both do. They definitely do for me. I've got quite a few vices in my shop. I don't need all of them. Some of them are given to me and I'll go through that, but uh, they all serve a different purpose for me. This particular vice was given to me for Father's Day by my son. So it uh, is special to me for that reason. It is also special to me because it is the only vice I have in my shop that's got a large set of pipe jaws, and I'll show you those a little bit more in a second. But this is an Irwin record vice, and I'll try and measure these vices as we go. That is one of the main ways that vices are categorized is by jaw size. So let me get my tape measure out here so I get my finger in the camera. I'm pretty good at doing that. So this would be a five inch jaw. And again, that's how most vices are uh, categorized is by jaw size. But this one again has the ability, and I'll show you here, to flip the jaws all the way around. So you go from a standard jaw this way to pipe jaws. So that allows you to run a pipe horizontally through here through these jaws. And then you can also capture, obviously this is broken off, I've got a fab, a new piece here, but typically you can capture um, a piece of metal in here, a pipe, either running vertically, or you can obviously flip this to the horizontal position and then you can run a pipe in here horizontally. But the flexibility that you get with this vise is something that you definitely need in a shop if you're doing any sort of fabrication and that kind of thing. So that is the record vice by Irwin. Happy to have it in my shop. And it's actually attached to my welding table. I got a few things on top of the welding table right now, but um, so that's what I use that, that vice for, is uh, for welding purposes whenever I'm welding. Moving along through, we'll come over to the next vice. This is a saw vise, and these were used, and are still used, I still use this, to sharpen hand saws. And the way they work, obviously they mount to a bench, but you take this lever, flip it down, and you can see the jaws open up here. So you would flip your saw so that the back side of the saw would rest down in this area with the teeth pointed straight up. And then you come back over here, shut your jaws, and then you proceed to go down and sharpen all the teeth on the saw. I don't use this as much as I used to. I still use my hand saws, but I just don't use them often enough to where I need to sharpen them the way I used to. But these are old and they just, like I said, clamp right on to a piece of wood or any other thing. They're pretty mobile. They also, I'll show you here, I can lift this lever up, get you a better view here, but this will swivel. So you can mount it on pretty much anything that you want to, and then you can level it once you release that lever and you can put it in any position. So if you wanted to mount it on a fender, on your tractor, or wherever you are, you have the ability to do that. So that's a saw vise. It's the only one I have in the shop. Happy to have it. Let's, uh, let's cruise on through the shop here. See if we can go find a, another vise here. Uh, down here, we have a massive pipe vise so you can see how big this is. Uh, this was given to me for free. I was picking something up 
from a guy on Craigslist and he wanted to get rid of it. So he shoveled it off to me. And the way these work, this thing's very heavy, but you open it up on the side here and then it pivots backwards. You lay your pipe into these jaws here, obviously, and this would be mounted typically on a metal base, a tripod metal base of some sort. And these were used primarily by plumbers. Not only by plumbers or exclusively by plumbers, but uh, farmers and plumbers, as I should say. This one I actually picked up from a farmer. Um, they did a lot of their irrigation pipe uh, work on these. But anyway, you'd put your pipe in there, you close it down. Let's see if I can do this one. It secures back down underneath right here. And then you're able to work on your pipe. This is uh, obviously one of the bigger ones that were made. I've got a little smaller one that I use. This one just kind of was cool and it was free. So can't beat that. Uh, let's see, moving over here, this is a Dawn 5SP, made in Australia. This one I just kind of stumbled on. I was looking for advice because I was getting into blacksmithing, and the vice that I had, have, the jaws on it were they would mar your work. So I was looking for something that had smooth jaws and this one was not made with smooth jaws. It's just over the years, um, by abuse and use, it now has smooth jaws. But what makes this one special is what I'm showing you right there. This thing opens up to eight and a quarter inches. That is pretty incredible for a vise this size. The jaws on this are five inch, and I left my tape measure on the other side, so you're just gonna have to trust me on that one. But this is a what we call a fixed base, and it mounts directly to your, to your workbench. I prefer a fixed base, because um, you can beat on them. So, this is not in the best of shape. It has seen a lot of use. I'm not exactly sure how old this one is, but let's see if I can get this to focus. It has got what I refer to character marks all over it. But again, this is really the main reason I bought it is the smooth jaws. So when I'm blacksmithing, I can put a piece of metal in here and clamp down on it and it's not gonna mar my work piece. The other thing that makes this, and I didn't talk about this on the Irwin, but uh, the screw is covered by this piece here, which is nice because that uh, keeps any and all of your metal shavings, etc., whatever that you're working on out of the screw. The screw is housed inside here. So again, that's a Dawn 5SP made in Australia. Uh, let's see, moving on up. This is the smallest vise, and I'll show you how small this is. And it actually works. And I keep this up here, but this is a, I believe it's a jeweler's vise. This was given to me. It's got a mounting system up on top here. It's hard to see, but right in here, you screw it down. And then you can also screw it down from underneath. But just a really cool little vise in the shop. It's got a little anvil on it and a little horn. Again, that was just given to me for free, but the screw's in great shape, the handle's in great shape, and if I wouldn't have shown you by way of my fingers how big it was, you'd probably think it was a full-size vise. 
Let's move on through the shop. Let's see here. This is a drill press vise. I've got a lot of these. If you do any work or you are buying and selling in metal fabrication, you just stumble on these all the time. A lot of these are given to me. I've got one on each one of my drill presses, or I should say for each one of my drill presses. Uh, I've got another one sitting back here in the corner. And we'll get over to the third that I have. But, I mean, these are, for me, I have to have these for the work I do. And you can see, I just clamp them down to the table. There are other methods of uh, attaching these to uh, the table on your drill press, but this is the simplest for me, and I've just been using it for years. So again, that's a drill press vise, and you just put your work piece in here, and you clamp it down, and away you go. So pretty simple. They work well. Back here, I've got three vices. This one here is a Colombian, I believe. Yeah, this one's a Colombian. And these have three inch jaws on them. This particular vice was given to me. Um, like I said, I've got two more back there. They're about the same size, but this was uh, made in the USA. The jaws on it are semi-smooth. They're not the best. And the screw, as you can see, is exposed here. And then you can see up in here, when I talk about when I say that it's important that the screw be covered, because this is what happens. But the way this screw is designed, that it's so deep that even though you get stuff in here, it's not as big a deal. But if you get a lot of metal stuck up in there or a big chunk of metal, it will stop that screw from spinning. So anyway, that's a Columbian three and a half. And it's a smaller vise, but it's really smooth. It's old. Got that from, from a guy whose dad was a farmer. This next one is a Craftsman. This is old school Craftsman. Uh, not exactly sure how old, but this was back when Craftsman was making their own vices. And this is a, just a solid quality Craftsman vice. I got this one for free as well. This was picked up from a guy that I was buying something from Craigslist and he just kind of threw this in on the deal. <laughs> But these are also three inch jaws. But again, you can see on this one, the screw is covered here. And the jaws on this one have got a little bit more bite to them than that other Columbian that I just showed you. But this one's a little bit smoother than the Columbian. Really happy to have this one. I'm gonna mount this one someday. I just haven't got around to it yet. The last vice that I have over here, this is uh, my original vice that I bought just shortly after I got married. This is a Craftsman, obviously four inch, but I think the jaws are actually four and a half inches, um, if I remember correctly. Screws covered on it, um, teeth, Got a ton of grip, and they're replaceable. Some of those other vices are replaceable. I didn't talk about that, I apologize. It's got a little anvil on the back, a little horn. But the quality of this vice is inferior to this one by a long stretch. This one was made in the USA, China. Um, this one, I had no issues with this when this was my main vice and I used it as my main vice for probably, I don't know, seven, maybe 10 years even. You can see it's, it's had a fair amount of use, but it's a solid vice. Nothing wrong with it. Just, uh, it's not smooth at all. 
the screw is really tight. You can see it's just, it's going to hold its position there. It's just a really tight screw and I've tried to get it to loosen up, but there's just no doing. Which isn't that big of a deal, I guess. But anyway, first vice I ever had. Um, it's probably 30 years old, something like that. All right, let's move through. Let's see, I've got one down here. This is my blacksmith's post vice. Um, let me pull out the snatch block. So there's a leg. I also call it a leg vise. But it mounts on a post. And it's specifically made for blacksmithing. The jaws pivot down here. This whole leg. The screw is encapsulated in this sleeve here. So you cannot damage the screw whatsoever. And as you turn this gigantic handle, the screw, which you can see goes back in there, opens these jaws wide. It attaches with this bracket right here, which I am missing a piece for. And that is why it's sitting on the ground. I've got to fabricate a bracket for this so that I can mount it. This actually came out of a railroad yard. It smells like diesel and oil. Love it. Guy I bought it from, that's that's where he got it. He was going to clean it up for me uh, before I came to pick it up. I said, do not clean that vice. I love the grime. I love the smell. So these are, I believe seven and a half inch jaws on this or seven inch one or the two but these are made back in the late 1800s 1900s so until i get that mounted i'm still using that dawn 5sp but this thing probably weighs i don't know 150 pounds i would imagine something like that not light very, very heavy. This is a Merrill Brothers Bohemoth. This was made in uh, New York. This one does have an exposed screw. This thing weighs probably 200 pounds at least. What makes this unique is it's a swivel vise, but it acts like a fixed base. So that little portion that you see resting on top of the workbench would actually fit in a hole that you would drill on your workbench. And then there's a screw that goes up in there that attaches it to your workbench. So if you need to swivel it, you just go underneath your workbench, loosen it up, and then this thing would swivel. But just to give you some perspective on how big this is. The handle alone probably weighs a solid seven, eight pounds. It's just huge. These jaws are seven inch. They've seen better days. But I bought this because of its size. I didn't go searching for this. A guy I was buying something else from, which is often the case with me, had this sitting in the corner and said, I got something you may be interested in. But this opens up to about 14, 15 inches, I believe. Give you another look of how that mounts down below. And just the size of this thing. I mean, this thing is just huge. But I'm happy to have it. I'm going to have that mounted up someday. 
again, I just kind of come, come on these things. I don't necessarily look for them and then they just show up in the shop and then I got to find a place to put them. But again, that's Merrill Brothers. That's the biggest vice I have in the shop, even in ways outweighs the blacksmith vice. This is the main vice in my shop. This is a Colombian 504 M2. I call it a Colombian 504. Um, this one doesn't open quite as wide as the Dawn. This one opens up to five and a half inches, but it is the smoothest, as you can see, smoothest vice I have in the shop. There's a reason it's the main vice that I use. It uh, was bought at a Boeing surplus auction. They live in Washington State, and Boeing is a was the uh, largest employer in the state. And so as their equipment got a little bit older, they used to have a lot of surplus auctions. And anyway, the guy I bought it from, that's where he got it. And this is, again, a fixed base vise. Again, I prefer the fixed base over the swivel vise. And let me go through that with you real quick so you know what I'm talking about. So on the bottom of a swivel vise, this is where if you're banging on the vise, this is what takes a lot of the, the brunt force that you're, that you're hammering because that's what holds. You can see right here, that bolt just goes right up into this housing right here. And let me flip the vise back over. When you're beating on the jaws out here, you can see the force that would be the up upward force that would be applied here and the pressure put on that bolt going through there and if you look at this one i think is it this one no it's this columbian you can see there on that columbian right up in here see how that's bent and that's exactly what i'm talking about so with a swivel base, and I can see if I can get it to focus there, you can see how much that's bent. And that's just due simply to the fact that you're, you're beating on whatever material that you have in here. And this base is wanting to lift up off of the fixed base that's attached to your workbench. So again, let's move back over here to what we call again a fixed base vise. You don't have that. So you can beat on these things all day long and where these typically fail is either gonna be in the jaws here or it'll be in the screw. The screw will give out um, where it gets captured inside here. But I mean, you gotta be beating on these things pretty good to make that happen. Let's keep moving here. See what else we got. This is obviously another drill press vise. I've already gone through them, but um, here it sets. They serve their purpose. And I think last but not least, this is another pipe vise. This one obviously a lot smaller than the rigid that I showed you over there, but works exactly the same way. And this is an old, I'm not sure who made this one. To be honest with you, I'm not seeing any markings on here myself other than those. Number one each. And this was given to me. So, you can see I have a vice. V I C E. Vices. <laughs> Actually, in all fairness, like I said, I did not buy all of these vices. If you've watched any of my videos, 
uh, in the past, you know that I love tools. And for me, I would say the vice is probably top five in the shop, simply because there are things that you just cannot get done without it. Um, to me, it's vices are kind of like a good buddy. You call in the middle of the project, to come help you out. And when you get done, you pat them on the back and you say, Hey, thanks, man. I, I couldn't have got it done without you. That's truly how I feel. Uh, when I get done with a project, when I've used a vice, uh, they're just that necessary in the shop for me. And, um, I'm grateful to have them. If you don't have one, maybe you need one. And if you have one, depending on how much work you do, maybe you need two, maybe three. I don't know. Uh, but they are, without a doubt, in my shop, a tool that I just could not get work done without. So thank you for walking around with me, like I said, in the shop. And if you have not subscribed yet, I would sure appreciate it if you did. Um, it just reaffirms to me that the content that I'm putting out is something that you're interested in. And if you were entertained, maybe a little bit, or learned something in this video, if you could give me a like, maybe share the video, that would definitely help out as well. So thanks again for watching and uh, I'll catch you on the next one. Take care.